Hello, everyone, and welcome to the quarterfinals of the Orlando Open Weekend. On your left, you've got Ely Cassis. On your right, you've got David Sharfman. Four Color Retreat versus Goryeo's Vengeance. And Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan are here in the booth bringing the quarterfinal action. And Nick Miller is down there in the feature match area. He'll be doing live tweets all quarterfinals long as Ely Cassis is going to start things off with a noble hierarchy. Cassis with one copy of Visit Staticaster in the deck, one copy of Reclamation Sage. No way to search for it. And we question these cards. What is going on here? When we have a little break in the action, I'll explain because I asked Cassis about it. He has an answer. I'm excited to find out what this answer will be as a lightning bolt is the answer for the Noble Hierarch as we're underway here in game number one. Of course, we do have updates for you on what does happen in our quarterfinals and other matchups. We will certainly let you know. For now, we'll watch Cassis play his second turn of the game, and that will bring another copy of Noble Hierarch and simply a passing of the turn. Over to Sharfman we go. Remember, his Goryeo's Vengeance deck, not the one you're probably used to with all of the life gain from Nourishing Shoal. That's not what he's trying to do here. It's more of a value Goryeo's Vengeance deck, I guess is the best way to describe this, as Sharfman. Looks like he's going to be playing some sort of card manipulation spell. He'll go with a sleight of hand, I believe. You can see Sharpen's hand, some, some lands, a couple copies of Simeon Spirit Guide, and a Gristle Brand. So there's a lot of paths here for his hand to get very good, uh, but right now it's a bit of a dead end. It is a sleight of hand. He will add one card, put the other one to the bottom. Sleight of hand done resolving. I believe the former Pro Tour champion does have another land to play. You can see a Scalding Tarn over there. So he's good to go as far as lands are concerned on this turn. For Sharfman, this is his fifth SCG Tour top eight. He's already got two wins. One in 2010, many moons ago, in Orlando, and one in 2012 in Tampa. Now Sharpman will sacrifice the Scalding Tarn. 2010 is before my time. Oh, yeah. He gets himself a watery grave. I, 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 when we saw the graphic, and you know, you can see this on the coverage page as well, Sharpman's 26. I, I, I can't believe he's that young. He's been around right. for so long. I would have guessed at least in his 30s by now. Yeah. Here is a Serum Vision. He'll draw a card. And now he will scry two. One on top, one on bottom for David. So I think Sharpman is ready to go next turn. I believe he has another land, a Through the Breach, an Emerald Cold now on top of the deck, along with two copies of Simeon Spirit Guide. That'll make it pretty easy. By the way, what's up with that card being legal? <laughs> Can we talk about that? <laughs> it's, uh, it's We're gonna ban Lotus Petal by now, right? Yeah, Lotus Petal will be long gone. Right, and yeah. this is close enough. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Hey, I'm not, you know, I don't really have a horse in the race either way. It just strikes me as a little odd. Cassis will be taking his third turn of the game. Gavany Township looks like it's going to be the land. Uh, came to the wrong battle here. With oh, the old township. that's nice. You can put tokens on your creatures over time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to do that when they're all in the graveyard. Mm. Oh, Emrakul, that's a good draw. Yeah, scribe to the top via Serum Vision, so we got all rolled up. Yep. Remove some Simeon Spirit Guides, and now here's Through the Breach. It's a Cracker Jack. He's probably going to put into play, what, a Petrodon? <laughs> Avatar of Woe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, an Emrakul. Ah, uh, never mind. Not quite. Uh, there will be an attack step here for David Sharpen in just a moment, along with Annihilator 6 trigger. And Ely Cassis, I believe, is going to fall down to 4 and lose his entire board. But, but he'll gain a life thanks to the scavenging ooze. And it looks like he's going to remove something from Sharpen's graveyard as well so that it cannot be shuffled in from the Emrakul trigger. Mm -hmm. Smart. Smart. Every little edge. Now, clearly, this is going to be a pretty hard game for Cassis to win now, given uh, the state of his battlefield. But we have seen players come back in situations like this before. Well, keep in mind, Sharpen's hand right now, a, a gristle brand, and I think another uh, uh, blank is maybe a strong word for it, but not a path towards anything. They're going to be playing off the top here. Cassis at five and no board to speak of. Sharpen definitely a huge favorite to win the game from this spot, but nothing's guaranteed. Cassis will draw a card. He will simply pass the turn back as we head back over to David. I think he may have just drawn a copy of Goro's Vengeance. For now, however, he will play the Steam Fence. Cassis, the Whiff. Sharkman, the Serum Vision. He'll draw a card. He'll scry two. Both are going to go to the bottom. We're going to head back over to Ely here. 
in just a moment, I believe. Sharfman will play the Scalding Tarn. That's land number five in case he draws through the breach. Cassius misses again, so we head back over to Sharfman. Is it Charm? We'll allow him to draw two cards and discard two cards, one of which will be Gristlebrand. Another one is Emrakul. Trigger on the stack. Yeah, Orioles Vengeance. Return a legendary creature. It'll have haste, and that's going to do it. David Sharfman going to win game number one here over Ely Cassis. As Gorio's Vengeance picks apart the four-color retreat deck. Cassis is going to have to be a lot quicker than that. He has a, I mean, this is a matchup where he really needs to have Retreat to Korra Helm plus Knight of the Reliquary. Yeah. And then in some ways, Cassis' deck does sort of remind me of Splinter Twin. It's very different. A lot of the cards are different, of course. But Splinter Twin could play the value blue control game, but there were some matchups where you had to have the combo. The games were over too fast. This is the type of matchup where you really need to have the combo. And in his version of that is Knight of the Reliquary plus Retreat to Korahom. So the value game of assembling a board of a bunch of interlocking green creatures and extracting value over time, the game isn't going to play like that. So it's got to be about assembling the combo as fast as possible. Well, game one is done. That means we're going to go to the sideboards here. and We are going to start with Ely Cassis, who's got all these fun ofs. I actually couldn't read this yesterday without laughing. Yeah. Simply because it's a ridiculous sideboard. But here I'm going to try. Celestial Purge, Detention Sphere, Reclamation Sage, Eternal Witness, Corsair of Crewfix, Pajuka Bog, Ghost Quarter Scavenging Use, Surgical Extraction, Engineer Explosives, Is It Static Caster, and then your two ofs, Negate and Loaming Shaman. So the anti graveyard measures he's going to want here, I, I believe, the two copies of Loaming Shaman, the Scavenging Use, the Surgical Extraction, and the Bajuka Bog. That can break up the Goryo's Vengeance element of the deck, and then the two copies of Negate help him fight the Through the Breach build, uh, uh, execution from Sharpman's side. So. Nothing guaranteed here, but he at least has interactions on both ends of Sharfman's combo. For David, he's got four thoughts. He's a Vandal Blast, three Anger of the Gods, four Elena and Sanctity, two Quicksilver Amulet, and then a Murderous Cut. I don't know if he has room to bring in seven cards, but given what Cassis is bringing to the table here, I would want the Thought Seizes to break up the combo or to get Negate out of the hand, backed up by Anger of the Gods, which is just very disruptive to Cassis' deck, putting a bunch of very small creatures on the battlefield. Well, those are the options there for both players, and we will go over some of these fun ups here for Ely Cassis in just a moment, but as I do shuffle and sideboard, we're going to talk about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale one last time here as it's going to change tomorrow morning, so you better get in right now. Yeah, new sale, 11 o'clock tomorrow, East Coast time, which is the time the sale resets every single week, so make sure you're going back to the website at least once a week. Check out what the sales are. Uh, this week, 25% off all moderately played foils, so if you want to check out some foils, go to the website right now while they are on some deep discounts. Well, we'll do some quick updates for you because uh, the updates are going to be pretty fast here. So I've got uh, I've got Tom Ross. It looks like already up a game here over Lance Austin. So eight rack up a game over Infect. I've got Bradley Carpenter playing Infect up a game over Michael Majors playing Scape Shift. And then it looks like for Paul Dunaway and John Kuvi, I believe they're in game number two. And it looks like John is up a game over Paul. So these aggressive decks not messing around then you got tom ross making people discard so uh for cassis's deck here oh, one yeah. copy of reclamation sage right. and one copy of visit tag caster no right. way to search for him what's going on over there because he said the deck can't really beat in snaring bridge that's that's a card it can't work around naturally so what you can do is if you're going off with knight of the reliquary plus retreat to korahom you can stack up a bunch of scry triggers uh, over the course of doing your business, set the Reclamation Sage to the top of your deck, get a Horizon Canopy as one of your lands, draw the Reclamation Sage, and then get the Incendiary Bridge off the battlefield. With his Static Caster, not necessarily a particular thing he's trying to answer, but he just wanted to have a fifth creature that he could go off with with Retreat to Coral Helm, and that's a card that's capable of managing the opponent battlefield very easily when backed up by fetch lands and so forth. All right. Yep. And the Eternal Witness can get back, it is a fine value creature, and can also get back those two creatures in the spots where you want them. So what's the deal with Selfless Spirit? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't ask about yeah, that. That's the one I want to know, what's going on there. That I did not think to ask about. I don't know. The other ones, okay, I can get on board with it with the rationale. Totally fine. You know, he's got two Spell Quellers, just a good card. Right. Um, two Corsair Crew Fix, again, just a good card. The one to Hiri, kind of part of a combo-esque thing that's going on, but also just a good card. The one of Revelark, eh, don't love it. Seems pretty ambitious. I suppose when you're playing against Jund and Obzon, that could be a thing. Uh, and then the Selfless Spirits, I have no idea. Well, I think this this deck probably struggles in some matchups that are just Jund decks with Terminates and things like that that can easily kill Knight of the Reliquary. Sure. And Revelark and Nahiri, they play pretty well in those matchups. Here we go. Bird of Paradise here for Ely Cassis. Let's go back over to David Sharfman. Who's drawn and is it Charm? That's 
is a Scalding Tarn and now a Serum Visions. Got to get a Watery Grave to play the Serum Visions. So Sharp will be drawing a card and then scrying two here in just a moment as we work our way through the quarterfinals here in Orlando at SCG Live. Hashtag SCG ORL for your tweets. All weekend long to make our way through these elimination rounds. Looks like a Creeping Tar Pit was the draw. And now Scry 2 here for Sharfman. Looks like both are going to go to the bottom. And we head back over to Cassis, who will draw a card for the turn. An island is what he's found. He'll play that island. And there's another Noble Hierarch. We saw two of those in the first game. And aha! That's nice. The selfless <laughs> spirit. <laughs> That's nice. Yes. To David Sharpman we go. It's his second turn of the game. There is always more to give, says the selfless spirit. We'll see about that. Sharpman in the tank. Pretty good here for a second turn. Does have an is it charm. Not sure if he's got a Gorio's Vengeance or through the breach just yet. He has Gorio's Vengeance, Simeon Spear Guide, and is it charm. Don't know if he has a creature to pair with everything. Okay. And he's just going to play a Scalding Tarn, pass that turn back, as he's will draw for the turn. He's got a copy of Voice of Resurgence over there, among others. Looks like he actually has a copy of Spell Queller as well. Spell Queller is pretty solid against Sharpman's deck. Yeah, absolutely. Forces through the breach. Yeah, you can take care of Gorio's Vengeance pretty well there. Cassis has a lot of anti Gorio's Vengeance measures. He has Night of the Royal Aquarius for Bajuka Bog, a, a variety of creatures that, that nuke the graveyard. He can handle that pretty well. Uh, fewer answers for Through the Breach. For Cassis, this is his 11th SEG Tour top eight. So this is pretty familiar territory for him. Most of his work done in Legacy. It's really surprising to me, not that Cassis isn't a very good Magic player, but just. I don't think of him attending all that many events. No, I mean, Le 11 top eights is, is a lot more than I would have guessed. No. And there is the steam vents. And we have our first result. Didn't take long. Bradley Carpenter. Mm hmm decimated Michael Majors. You had a feeling because he was on the play, he'd get the job done, and he absolutely did. 2-0 as Infect takes care of Scape Shift. But still a very solid weekend for Majors with the top eight performance, some more SEG points. Can't be mad about it, but a bit of an abrupt end. Yeah, it was a, it was a quick one. I guess that's what Infect does, right? Kills you pretty fast. Sharfman searched up a steam vent. Now he's going to play a mountain, it appears. He's already down to 13. It's his third turn of the game. This is an Izzichar. See if this resolves. Remember, Cassis does have a copy of Spell Queller in hand. And I think Cassis here is hoping that he can get a Gorio's Vengeance for his trouble as well. Looks like Sharpen's going to want to discard some lands here, but don't have a great scope on things. He's mindful of spell caller here, or the possibility some other counter spell or collect a company for spell queller. Mm -hmm. He may want to try to go the through the breach route. Looks like collected company and Emrakul. Yeah. Just discard uh, I, uh, Sharpen showing some patience here. He is not, he could have tried right there to just go for uh, discard my Simeon Spirit Guide and Gorio's Vengeance. But I think he knows that that's enough of a long shot and he's just much better served here trying to go for through the breach the next turn. It's not like he's under that much pressure. Yep, he's got some life and some time to work with. Anything else here for David, I suppose, is the question. 
No, he's just going to pass the turn back. We'll go back over to Ely Cassis, who has a copy of Collected Company to cast, it appears. Yes, he does. So, top six. Reflector Mage, maybe? Perhaps. Spell Queller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there was one in there, actually. There's also an Eternal Witness. So there you go. Another match in the books. I guess people are looking to watch some Sunday Night Football tonight. Jeez. <laughs> John Cuvier wins his match two games to zero over Paul Dunaway. Affinity destroys Bantel Drazi. John going to play the winner in this match. Just as soon as it is over. Beatdowns for six. Sharpman down to seven. Cecil just passed the turn back, it appears, still leaving Spellcaller up. I think he's in a pretty good spot right now. Looks like Island the draw there for Sharfman. There's Pluto Delta. I believe he has the tools for Through the Breach Emrakul. I'm not sure if he has Through the Breach in hand. I think that's the only question right now. Looks like he has Collective Brutality. You can see the Simeon Spirit Guide. But if he's, if he's going kind of this route... It leads me to believe, maybe. He's going to start by sacrificing here. Okay. Yep. I would imagine through the breach if he has the tools to do it this turn with a Simeon Spirit Guide and Emrakul. So much better than any other possible line of play yeah. that he would just be doing it. It's bad against Negate, but it's good against almost any other line of play. Now his hand is somewhat forced as he's sacrificing that Polluted Delta knocks him down to six, and now he's facing six points of power in play. So mm -hmm. he's got to make a move of some sort this turn. He's going to use the basics, it looks like, to play Collective Brutality. David, David giving this a long thought. So here's Collective Brutality. He's going to escalate by discarding a copy of Emrakul. With the trigger on the stack to shuffle it back in, he's going to play Goro's Vengeance, looking to target Emrakul. I think this is where the spell clover comes into play that Ely has been sitting on. Yes. Yeah, a little surprised we haven't seen more spell clover in modern yet. Three mana is a lot. I yeah. mean, we're we're already in a format where holding up remand and mana leak is a pretty challenging thing to do. It's a third mana, and it's a second color, but the card's definitely legit. I mean, I think that it will show up uh, a reasonable amount in modern when it's all said and done. Uh, but the format is awfully fast right now. Well, it was good that game. Ely Cassis going to win game number two here against David Sharpman. Four-color retreat, and Goryeo's Vengeance going to get ready here for a third and final game. So we look at those sideboards one more time. See what they're working with here. They're both going back to the drawing board. And, well, with Sharpman on the play, it makes you wonder if he's going to want something like a Thought Sea. It seems like Anger of the Gods might be okay as well. I don't know if you like those options. I like the Anger of the Gods fine. Uh, the, the problem that I have with all this is it's it's seven cards. I don't know if Sharpman's really looking to trim seven cards out of the deck. The Thought is a little bit more attractive to me than the Anger of the Gods because I think the more problematic cards in Cassis' deck from Sharpman's perspective are the spells. It's the Negates and it's the Spell Quellers. The Anger of the Gods can be good in certain spots, but it's not trivial for Sharpman to put double red together. And also, he just might be better served trying to make it as fast of a race as possible. So uh, it's possible Anger of the Gods is in the deck. Uh, certainly, Cassis is flooding the battlefield with enough small creatures. But there is a question of how much this, uh, this deck can really afford to sideboard out. For Cassis, with all those one ofs and a couple two ofs, you know, you do like, I think, Loaming Shaman and Negate. I think those are actually pretty good options here. I like the anti side, uh, the anti graveyard cards because the opportunity cost is so low, and Cassis has a little bit of nonsense in his main deck for the matchup. You know, the Revelark that is its static caster, these are easy cards to cut. So he's got some flexibility. 
it's unlikely that Loaming Shaman, Scavenging Ooze, Surgical Extraction, what have you, really shut Sharfman down. Uh, but there's a shot that that does happen. It does force him to lean a lot more on Through the Breach as a more reliable way of setting up the combo. And the two copies of Negate are excellent in that spot as well. Oh. Those are the options again there for each player, and they're going to shuffle up. They're going to get ready to rock and roll here in just a moment. So we will, for the last time, talk about StarCityGames.com game night. It's your last time to pronounce Hedge Hedge. I blew it. Hedge Hog. -hog. I almost said Hedge Hog. I can't even do it. It's Hedge Hog. -hog. There it is. There it is. Now, Bone Chewer Giant, that's easy to say. I'm going to let you take care of the rest, though. Well, you can over to go.starcitygames.com slash game night for more information. Every month, we send out a new kit with pins and tokens. We send to the stores that are signed up for game night. The stores can then run game night however they want to, any day of the week. Whatever format, just get players in the store on a regular basis for some fun and friendly magic. This is a September kit where you're playing for right now, the Bone Shure Giant. We have the next two months already lined up here. We go to October where we have Hedgehog -a Hog. And then in November, Bang. Mole Warden. Again, go.starcygames.com slash game night for more information and find the game night closest to you. Stores, if you are not signed up for game night and would like to be, Contact your Star City Games in-store play representative. Well, well, well. We have our third results, folks. A great run for Tom Ross with the old eight rack -aroo, but he's been hoisted by his own petard. Infect has taken him down, and now we're going to have an Infect mirror on one side of the semifinal bracket. And then Affinity versus the winner of this. Yeah. And people, you want to be Cass and Siege Rhino? Yes. <laughs> That's what people want to do. I'd like to resolve Hunt a Master of the Fells. Yes. <laughs> Don't is, mind if I do. Is that okay? Yes. I like two tutus for four Does mana. my Obnixilis resolve? Yes. No, the game ended three turns ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> Gotta be quick. Yeah. Gotta be quick and modern. Don't tell that to Castell with his obs on deck. Oh, I know. He loves it. They're grinded down. Could have cast Read the Bones. Yep. There are so many modes on obs on charm. <laughs> How am I only supposed to select one yeah. <laughs> when they're all so attractive? <laughs> A Dark Slick Shorts for David. He'll pass the turn back over to Cassis. Even Ely's deck is a little fair for my sensibilities, and he's killed on the third turn plenty of times on camera. Yeah, at least he's got a <laughs> combo. I can appreciate that. Here's Scalding Tarn. This is a Thought Seize. What's Ely Cassis working with? Can we see? Negates. Disgusting Expeditions. Pachuca Bog, Loaming Shaman, and two collected companies. I'm not sure this hand is it. Uh, so, problem with this hand is it can't get its gloves up for a couple turns here. <laughs> if Sharpman takes the negate out of it, uh, this does not bode well. I don't think so either, yes. Yes, yeah. negate. Oh, it's like the negate, yes. We're going to allow Ely Cassis to take his turn, but before he does that, he will sacrifice the Misty Rainforest, fall down to 19, and we'll search for some sort of Ravnica shock land. Attempt to resolve Gideon ally of Zendikar. <laughs> we'll make a knight, and it is your turn in Fantasyland. Yes. Where that, where, that, <laughs> where that is a permissible thing to be doing in this format. It is your turn in Standard, where that card is allowable. Yep. Breeding Pool is the land that Ely does search for, and now we head back over to our number one overall seed. Oh, it's an expedition. It hurts my eyes. Which one is that? That's why you're here. Windswept Heath. Thank you. I'm out in the draw here for Sharpman. There is a mountain and just a passing of the turn. Maybe Sharpman's draw is not coming together very well. Well, I think that he has the tools to combo out over the next two turns because I think he has Gorio's Vengeance plus it is a charm plus a uh, Gorio's Vengeance. So he's got the tools. The problem is that he knows about the Loaming Shaman in Cassis's hand. So he kind of has to do this end of your turn is a charm, untap, do my thing because the Loaming, Sh Loaming Shaman can do the graveyard. All right. He could have tried to go for it and hope to draw a Sibian Spear Guide, do everything in one turn, but that's unnecessarily risky right now. He also has a copy of Collective Brutality in hand. 
There's another expedition. I mean, that would be, is that the Canopy Vista? I believe so. Yep. Found it. Or actually, it's a Horizon it's Canopy. Sorry, Horizon yeah, Canopy. I thought it was Canopy game. Vista. It's Horizon Canopy. There it is. We're going to watch Sharfman now sacrifice the Scalding Tarn on the hunt for a land. Now the concern if you're in Sharfman's position is uh, it's possible because he's just sitting here with mana up because he knows if he casts a Lomi Chami, he's just going to die. Also possible that Cassis has found a spell queller inside of these draw steps, and I'm not sure Sharpman's really in a position to handle that card because he can't take it with Collector Brutality, and I don't think he has a Through the Breach combo right now. So he could just ignore it and say, well, you've only got one Negate left in your deck plus two copies of Spell Queller. I know you're going to start ripping off some Collected Companies next turn, so i got to make a move here. If I'm in Sharpman's spot and I don't have a great idea what's in Ely's hand, I kind of just want to rip off a Is It Charm here and say, you know what, if you did it, you did it. But it also just depends on what's in his hand. Faithless Looting is there, so he's going to start here. Sharfman would like to draw and discard. I'm inclined to go for this turn if I'm Sharfman, if it's at all justifiable, just because I think that Cassis would make the same line of play even if he's drawn nothing. Sharpen will draw two. We'll see what he's going to discard. There are the discards. Stack it with the Emrakul trigger on the stack. Goro's Vengeance, target Emrakul. Yeah, I like this line of play from Sharpman. Yeah. Either you have Spell Queller or Negate or you don't. Cassis is going to sacrifice this Horizon Canopy. Draw a card. Emrakul is back on the battlefield. This trigger is going to allow Sharpman to shuffle things back in. The Emrakul trigger has resolved now. And then Ely Cassis is going to lose 15 life. He's going to go down to 3. He's also going to lose his permanence. And he's going to have to come back in a difficult situation. We have seen this before from Sharpman. And Sharpman's got some leftovers too. Hollowed Fountain tapped Cassis will pass the turn. Sharfman has drawn an island. He'll play a Serum Visions. Time to draw. And now Scry 2. We'll consult the hand before finishing the Scry here with the Serum Visions. We'll see if these cards are going to go to the top or the bottom. And it looks like they are both headed downstairs. Anything else here for David? Nope, he'll just pass the turn back. Cassis will draw. Remember that he doesn't really want to commit the Gristle Brand to the graveyard until he's confident he can go off in the same turn because Cassis could just rebuild to the Loaming Shaman. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want to leave that exposed. He's been very careful about that as Cassis is going to sacrifice that Mr. Rainforest. Fall down to two, and it might be time for old Selfless Spirit, huh? I'm going to take it back. How about mm. Voice of Resurgence instead? Because he's not sure. But he will go with the Voice of Resurgence. Collective Brutality is going to finish things off, and that is going to do it. David Sharfman is going to win this match here for Ely Cass over, over Ely Cassis. Excuse me. Two games to one. Goryeo's Vengeance will take care of Four Color Retreat. And for Sharfman and his Goryeo's Vengeance deck, it's John Cuvier up next. Two good friends about to duke it out in the semifinals. It'll be Vengeance against Affinity. Some fast decks. Yeah. Affinity being the slowest, most controlling of the decks we're going to be seeing in the yeah.